spotlight today. Delighted to be joined by Thomas Bertania from uh, Pinopol in Rio de Janeiro. Thomas, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. I've, I've been seeing the conference and it's been really great conference with great information. I want to thank everybody for sharing their experience and I'm honored to be here between so many experienced people in the fitness industry and it's an honor for me and I, I would like to contribute with what I can from my awesome. experience. Well, listen, well, we really, really appreciate your time and thank you so much for, for showing up, Thomas. Um, you know, really, really exciting to talk with you actually because of the, the business and the line of the work you're in and the part of the world you're in, first of all. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about PNFL before we get into the nitty gritty. Okay, uh, our business is mainly about pole dance. And nowadays I think maybe we're one of the biggest pole dance studios of, of the world maybe. From what I know, uh, I've been talking to people in the States and Europe. I think we've been doing a great job. We've, we are now like five years old and we grew from, from 20 square meters to 400 square meters in those five years. And uh, when pandemic started, we also migrated to online. So we now have a pretty solid online business also, which is like same size revenue of our uh, in-person business. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's about pole dance and I think <laughs> It's a great industry to be in and it, it has a lot to do with a lot of people who talk uh, here today in the conference. Uh, I was listening. I'm not from the fitness world. I, I came from from corporate engineering world. And so when, when you guys start, start talking about community, you know, and customer experience, I see um, my my staff and, and people that work for me are co-owners and they already had that like being to build into their yeah their dna so i think that was something that really natural for them Thomas, you, you spoke a second ago about how digital now accounts for 50 percent of your revenue which i find i find fascinating for a, a pole dancing business and you know, when I think about the world locking down last March um, and, and everyone having to build up this digital business overnight, you know, it's very easy to do that for a hip business where it's, you know, you can do it in your living room. You don't need that much equipment. But it was a pole in their, in their house to, to you know, to yeah. do digital, digital pole dance with. So tell me what it was like to, to build yeah. that up from the ground up and, and how members have adapted. Yeah, we, it, it's also a, uh, a challenge for us because you need the bar the pole yeah. bar in your house to do the pole dance thing. Of course. So we didn't know we didn't know how this would figure out. So we built like a platform that has pole dance and of course flexibility classes and conditioning classes and also dance classes okay. attached to it. So so we get everything in like one package. But I was I was amazed about how many people had the bar in their home. <laughs> So we, we now have like 400, 430 online students. And I think most wow. of them have the bar home. So we, we, we are still trying and still testing. So we, we are now doing a, a launch of a, another platform, more dance oriented, less pole, but the pole dance thing still is unmatchable for us. Awesome. So you just spoke about, you know, what you're building at the moment. So maybe you can tell us a little bit more about what is next for Pinup Pole, or is it even going to be called Pinup Pole anymore? Yeah, it, it, it will be definitely be called Pinup. So we, keep the <laughs> we, have, we have only one Instagram account. We do everything in one, one same thing, you know, because we are the same people, same culture. And, you know, and, uh, and we believe dancing is cool with the pole and also it's cool without the pole. So it's, it will be, uh, we call it experience yourself. Like in Portuguese, it's called experimente. So this will be our, our newest product, like more dance oriented. But I don't know what's gonna happen, Stephen. I, I'm, <laughs> I don't know if, if it's gonna match the, the pole dance numbers. And obviously you're you're in Rio in, in Brazil and you know I'm sure there's there's members that are doing the digital classes right across Brazil and even across the world. That's the beauty of digital, right? 
But um, it, Brazil, very early on, you know, in the pandemic last year, was there was a massive impact on, on Brazil in particular. It was the, the you know highest number of cases per day for a while. And again, this year, it's, it's flared up again. So what is it like owning a business out there and having to continue to adapt when, when that's all happening on your doorstep? It was extremely challenging. We stayed one year closed. So we were forced into the online. So many people talked about this today. I don't want to talk the same, but it was really hard and it, it forced us to go online fast. We were ready for it because we were already recording classes. We already bought the camera, you know, we, we hired a guy that knows how to handle the camera, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to figure out how to put good audio to mix voice and music uh, into the camera, like simple technical stuff that makes a lot of difference. So we had it all figured out and when we had to go online, we already knew what we had to do. But it, it's, it, it was hard for us financially in the beginning our our landlords contributed they they uh we we paid half rent for uh, six months awesome so, so they helped out that yeah that was help that helped a lot you you spoke earlier on Thomas, about how you got into the fitness industry you didn't uh you know you didn't come out of the, the womb with a barbell or a pole you know you, you worked in engineering first so Maybe tell us a little bit about that journey and, you know, what, what sort of advice would you have for people that are thinking, you know, they're sitting at their desk job, they might be watching this right now and they're planning to turn their passion into their profession. What's the biggest piece of advice you can share to someone who's, who's going through that shift in mindset and getting ready to go out on their own? Yeah, I think you, you gotta, you got to see yourself where, where we, you stand in the business because I, I met... Uh, one of the teachers that became co-owners with me is my girlfriend. So not only because she was my girlfriend, but I, I saw that as an opportunity to, to come into the business and contribute with what, what I can. So I would say you have to see where you want to stand in the business. Are you the great instructor will, which, who will make the, the, the culture and, and the classes, you know, because I think the instructor is a real big important part of uh, class business. So are you the teacher or are you the business? So I, it's very hard for you to do both things. I see, I see a lot of people trying to do the, the two separate uh, roles yeah. in one person. And I think that is really hard. You, maybe you want to stick with one thing. What's the biggest growth hack that you've been able to um, deploy over the past year? You know, you've mentioned you have 400 plus online members. It's now accounting for 50% of your revenue. How do you build that customer base in the middle of, frankly, the, 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 the strangest environment, strangest business environment any, anyone on this, this webinar has ever been in? Uh, I think, well, uh, simply hack, you... you got to offer your best for free so we offer our best classes for free for a limited period of time so we we it's mar simple marketing you know we capture leads give them great 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 free classes and then offer them a yearly plan simply put this was our model Obviously, customer experience is a big part of the, you know, the growth strategy as well. Can you tell us a little bit about how you, you know, build a unique customer experience for your members? Online or in person? Yeah, I think in both in this scenario, Tomas. Yeah, I, I think I, I would talk about in person first because in person, I think online, what we try to do online is just mimicking do it as as much as similar to in person as possible so mm -hmm. in person we we have a very friendly um environment so we're dealing with girls so girls uh, they they have to stay well they have to use short clothes to have skin contact with the bar so they are seeing them in the in a giant mirror so there's a lot of 
um, sometimes for, for most of people, they feel insecure about looking at themselves almost naked in the big mirror. So we, our teachers and our instructors, what I see them doing, and it was not me who implemented this, it was them, they imply, they employ a very, very friendly environment and very, very easy going. So they start dancing, simple, 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 and then start building just one dance step at a time. So this is our, I think this is what makes our instructors great instructors. They push really slowly and get people comfortable in that strange, different environment. Of course. Well, the whole story has been absolutely fascinating to listen to, and I cannot wait to see uh, the future of Pinup and the, the next steps for the brand in Rio and, of course, further beyond. And it's obviously a brand that we are delighted to partner with here at Bell Fox and, and work with well into the future. So, Thomas, thank you so, so much for joining us uh, this morning slash afternoon slash evening, depending on where you are in the world. And uh, all the best. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks, everybody, for having me and great conference. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for the feedback. Right, so that's...